on their quest to the Holy Land, the Crusaders. Amidst the battle of the Mountains of Destiny, the Native Americans, and amidst the invasion of Normandy, the soldiers. What unites them all, except for death from old age at the age of 22, this is the summit of conflict, the apex of every warrior's existence, for the cradle of human culture has long been forged in the fires of war, blood, and valor. In today's video, we embark on an exploration of heroes, myths, and legend, delving deep into the annals of human history in pursuit of an almost unattainable answer, who, among the countless warriors of ages past, truly stands as the epitome of badassery. Of course, this is a completely subjective result. Still, we will try to base it on several parameters that will help us try to understand, at least objectively, who is the most baddest fighter in history. Before we delve into our quest for the most badass warrior in history, let's take a moment to understand the parameters guiding our search. These criteria, derived from a comprehensive analysis of historical writings and cultural narratives, serve as the pillars upon which we will evaluate each contender. Of course, it is important to remember that we are basing ourselves on historical texts, and therefore we should invest in trying to separate reality from exaggeration, unlike transgender people saying it is fair to compete in female sports. Because as great as Alexander the Great was, he was not the son of Zeus, or maybe he was, and sometimes historical texts tend to be a bit biased for such and such narrative. First and foremost, courage. In the crucible of battle, courage stands as the cornerstone of a warrior's character. It is the unwavering resolve to face danger, adversity, and the unknown with steadfast determination. Like a woman with blue hair and piercings trying to tell you, you are a misogynist, it's here, but the triumph over it, and it is this quality that's clarity the absolute. Next, we have achievements. At the heart of every legendary warrior lies a legacy of remarkable deeds and extraordinary accomplishments. Whether through decisive victories, heroic exploits, or feats of unparalleled skill, these achievements define a warrior's place in history and shaped the narrative of their legacy for generations to come. Longevity and productivity over a long period of time are crucial parameters in our evaluation. It's not just about a single moment of glory, but the sustained dedication and relentless pursuit of greatness over the course of a warrior's lifetime. Warriors who demonstrate consistent excellence and enduring impact across the ages earn their place among the most revered in history. Their skills and abilities form another essential criterion in our assessment. A warrior's mastery of weapons, combat techniques, and strategic acumen on the battlefield are key indicators of their prowess and effectiveness in the art of war. From swordsmanship to tactics, proficiency in these areas sets the truly exceptional warriors apart from the rest. Finally, legacy and influence serve as the ultimate measure of a warrior's impact on history and culture. Beyond their deeds in life, it is the lasting imprint they leave on subsequent generations, shaping perceptions, inspiring narratives, and influencing the course of events for centuries to come. So, in other words, Andrew Tick. A warrior's legacy is not confined to the pages of history, but reverberates through the corridors of time, echoing their influence across the ages. These parameters, courage, achievements, longevity and productivity, skills and abilities, and legacy and influence, eliminates all Indian people and provides us with a comprehensive framework for evaluating the most addis wire in history. As we embark on this epic journey, let us keep these criteria in mind as we seek to uncover the ultimate champion of valor and honor. Before we continue to our parade of warriors, you are invited to like and subscribe to the channel for more fascinating and hidden content from history that you will not be taught anywhere else. But just before we start with the fighters who passed the selection, here is a selection of fighters who did not pass a selection to the club. The Igorot warriors from the Philippines are famous for their loss to people who like to take two hours breaks in the middle of the day and have an economic crisis. Spain, living in the mountains, maybe the lack of air explains how they lost to the Spanish. They resisted Spanish invaders, using their knowledge of the terrain to their advantage. They fought to protect their land and culture with spears and shields, wearing traditional attire. But all of that was for nothing as they lost and became just Filipino people. You thought I was going to make a joke and hurt their feelings, but I already called them Filipino. The Zulu warriors were a powerful group from South Africa, famous for their strength and bravery, but never for their EQ. Maybe the lack of water to the brain is at fault. 
They were skilled fighters, known for their use of shields and spears in battle. Led by their mid-leader Sheikh Zulu, they fought to protect their land and keep their culture alive, but as we all know, it didn't work out. The Dacians were an ancient people, known for their rich culture and fierce warriors, inhabiting the area that is today Romania and parts of surrounding country. And we actually made a video about them that you can check out here. But after we saw the Romanians talking in the comments, we know for sure that the legacy did not continue, and after their fall, it went all downhill. Our last, almost as Bordica, she was a queen of the Iceni tribe, who lived in what is now Eastern England, around 68. After the Roman Empire took control of her territory, they treated her and her people unfairly. In response, Boudica led a major uprising against the Roman forces. She was a powerful and fearless leader, rallying thousands of Britons to her call. Her army managed to capture and destroy several Roman cities, including Londinium, modern-day London, but they still lost against the Roman powerhouse. Maybe she was on her period that day and gave them the silent treatment instead of the knife treatment. That's it. Now that we're done with the not so impressive fighters, please no swearing in the comments, Let's move on to the craziest and most amazing fighters that ever lived on Earth. It's impossible to talk about badass warriors without mentioning the Spartans led by Gerard Butler. These warriors rose to prominence thanks to their successful movies, but the Spartans were much more than impressive dice and battle cries. They were a well-oiled machine that was geared to war from birth they trained, fought, and hardened in the field of blood and fire. Their wives also maintained a high figure and fitness in order to give birth to children worthy of battle. The Spartans were brave warriors. As evidenced by their wars with the Persians, the Athenians, who in the end came out of the upper hand, and even remained the last stronghold in Greece that resisted the conquests of the legendary general Alexander the Great, who conquered almost all of Greece. Our next competitors are the Samurai. Did you really think we could leave them out? The Samurai lived according to the Bushido Code, a life without regrets, and basically lived by their sword. The Samurai stopped the Mongol invasion, managed to keep Japan isolated for hundreds of years, and were basically the most legendary breed of warriors in Asia. Good thing that America didn't exist in that era. To this day, the sword culture of the samurai is felt in the history of the Japanese people, and it is certain that the samurai would commit harakiri if they knew what animes are being broadcast in Japan today, especially this one. One of the most famous stories of the samurai warriors is that of the legendary samurai Miyamoto Musashi. Mm. There is the greatest saying in history that Musashi fought and won over 60 duels in his life but the craziest of them was in the battle against Sasaki Kajiro on Ganryojima Island in 1612. There was bad blood between the two, but Musashi took disrespect to the next level. He purposely arrived late to show how much he despised his opponent, pulled a wooden sword, and won effortlessly. It couldn't get any more badass than that. And let's talk about the Lakota warrior. There is nothing more badass than fighting against all odds. For your principles and the land of your ancestors, the Native Americans in general fought fiercely against the European invader, but the Lakota tribe was one of the most prominent in the resistance. The members of the tribe lived on the Great Plains and were used to living with nature and living in freedom. But everything changed when the Europeans invaded. Only the Avatar could stop them but he was too busy having that Katara sauce. The Europeans were more advanced, and the members of the Lakota tribe really had no chance. But the natives did not surrender without a fight, and inflicted overwhelming defeats on the Europeans. One of the famous battles was Battle of the Little Bighorn, a group of Native American tribes led by a crazy horse leader of the Lakota, whose name alone makes him an absolute candidate for the most badass warrior in history managed to defeat the U.S. Army, led by George Armstrong Custer, fallen in battle, Crazy Horse. Considered one of the craziest warriors, well, the name is binding, and among the great warriors of a Native American tribe, 
It is said that despite his status, he was the first to step into battle and the last to leave, a move of a true hero. And that's it, these were just some of the greatest fighters in history. Of course, this is an objective choice, and please don't kill us in the comments. It was all in humor, for part two leave a comment. Oh.